Christ, happy feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Let us now rise and welcome our, our Lord Jesus Christ in the person of his minister, Most Reverend Patricio A. Buzon, SDB, DD, Bishop of Bacolod, and all the concelebrating priests. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to and you, to my, my brothers, brothers and, and sisters, sisters, that I have greatly sinned in, in my, my thoughts house, and in my words. words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Chelsea's day -o.
Let us pray. Father, may the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother and Queen of Carmel, protect us and bring us to your holy mountain. Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel and bowed down to the earth, putting his face between his knees. Now go up, he told his servant, and look out to the sea. He went up and looked. There is nothing at all, he said. Go back seven times, Elijah said. The seventh time, the servant said, now there is a cloud. Small is a man's hand rising from the sea. Elijah said, go and say to Ahab, harness the chariot and go down before the rain stops you. And with that, the sky grew dark with cloud and storm, and rain fell in torrents. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Follow in your 
and caught less in disdain. God honors those who fear the Lord. Trust after you, Virgin Mary. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. When the appointed time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, born a subject of the law, to redeem the subjects of the law and to enable us to be adopted sons. The proof that you are sons is that God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit that cries, Abba, Father, and it is this that makes you a son. You are not a slave anymore. And if God has made you son, then he has made you heir. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the sequence. Flower of Carmel, blossoming, bearing one, light of heaven, mother of God's dear son, vine and virgin, gentle parent, pure beyond human love, bless your children, star shining far above this world's ocean. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, this is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. The Gospel of the Lord.
remain standing. Please be seated. Mayong aga sa aton nga tanan. Pag happy fiesta. The first reading we have heard is the conclusion of the story of the encounter between Elijah and the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. And we are all familiar with this story. This happened in one of the, the worst crises that Israel had experienced. The whole people was in danger of totally abandoning the faith, abandoning Yahweh for Baal because of Ahab, already an evil king who married an even more evil wife, Jezebel, was intent in, in bringing the cult of Baal to the nation. And uh, God sent prophets, and finally Elijah, and uh, punished them if only to shake them up and to make them return to him. And he sent a drought that lasted for three and a half years. And then the scene on Mount Carmel happened when uh, Elijah challenged the priests of Baal to a contest where they show their gods, their res respective gods. And you know what happened. He told them that uh, they put up their own, own altar and he would do likewise and prepare the offering, the animal offering, and he would do the same. But then the fire should come from their God. And so they started, the priests of Baal started to call Baal. And uh, the whole morning they called and there was no fire. And uh, finally, when it was the turn of Elijah, just to dramatize, he, he soaked the whole offering in water and the altar. And then he called God to send his fire. And the fire came and burned not only the offering but the altar. And then the people finally believed and at least for that time returned to God. And uh, the priests were killed. And, uh, and then the scene that we have just heard in the first reading is uh, finds Elijah there alone on the mountain and asking his servant to check, to look out to the sea if there was a cloud. And seven times he went, there was none. The, the, the sky was as clear as the blue sea itself. And finally, he came back after the seventh turn and said, yes, there is a cloud, but so small, small like the clasp of a, of a man's hand. And then Elijah said, go ahead, because it will overtake you. And uh, indeed, the cloud uh, increased and uh, a strong rain came down on the land, ending the long, long drought. I think the, 
the symbolism is clear to all of us. Mount Carmel prefigures and represents another mountain on which a sacrifice was offered which ended the punishment and brought salvation. Streams of living water, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, and Mount Calvary. Carmel is a prefiguration of Calvary. Elijah's saving sacrifice of Jesus, a prefiguration of the sacrifice on the cross. Elijah's saving sacrifice a prefiguration of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. As after the purification came the rain and salvation, from the cross flowed the streaming, the saving stream of grace that saved man. Jesus attained our salvation by dying on the cross. How can that be? when he was utterly helpless on the cross. And yet, this is the paradox. It was in his weakest moment that Jesus was most powerful. By his death, suffering and death, he vanquished Satan and conquered sin and death. How did he do it? by reverting everything that Adam and Eve did. Suffering, death came to us because of the sin of Adam and Eve. They wanted to be God. And Jesus reversed that completely. He came and divested himself of his divinity. And he, God, became man. And Philippians 2.9 tells us, he not only became a man, he became a slave, a man condemned. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Jesus reversed that. He was made obedient unto death, even death on a cross. The cross on Calvary is the picture of the great reversal. Jesus, the immortal God, into a mortal man. Jesus, the almighty God, reduced into a worm, in the words of Isaiah, the good shepherd, becomes the sacrificial lamb. The divine sower of whom we heard in last Sunday's gospel has turned into the seed that fell on the ground and died. The Messiah sent to set prisoners free has become himself a prisoner, a man condemned. Through Adam's sin, suffering and death entered into the world. What God did was he entered sin and from within he defined it he rendered it powerless so that it can no longer have power on man. And this is what we hear in the scriptures. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. 1 Peter 2.24 
He who knew no sin was made sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 St. John the Baptist introduced him to his disciples. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. He bore our sins. And the weight of sin laid on his shoulders is the sin of the world, is the sin of each and every one of us. What he suffered there on the cross was not only the cruelty of Calvary, but all the pain caused by sin through time. There he suffered the suffering, the pains of the world, even until now, the pains we carry, the pains of the pandemic, the pains of our broken lives, the pains of our broken relationships, all the pains of the world he took on his shoulder. And how did he, did he, he, how did he do this? How did he conquer sin? Jesus entered into, the, into its mystery and removed the venom by absorbing its poison. By submitting himself to death, yes, he died. And took upon himself all the toxin of sin. And having done that, he conquered sin. He vanquished sin from within. His death was temporary because he conquered it. The image of the words of God in telling about the salvation that was to come through a woman. I will put enmity between you, your seed, and the seed of the woman. And uh, I, I, I forget the I forgot the, the clear words are uh, the exact words. He will crush his head, but you will wound his heel. The victory of Satan over Christ in Calvary, on Calvary, by his death was temporary. He was able to wound the heel, but the heel crushed the head completely because after three days, he brought life. He rose. The image of this reversal is powerfully well explained, enlightened by uh, Rollheiser's image of the filter, which I'd like to borrow, in his book, The Passion and the Cross. The filter takes in the water and everything with the water, all its impurities, toxin, contamination, but gives it back pure and life-giving. In like manner, Jesus took on our sufferings and returned it to us, life-giving, salvific. In simple language, Jesus took away the sin of the world by taking in hatred and giving back love. He turned the anger of sin into graciousness. He absorbed its envy and returned a blessing, its bitterness, and gave warmth. 
its pettiness turned into compassion, the sin itself returned in forgiveness. And I think this is what Pope Francis prays in that beautiful prayer, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is darkness, light, and so forth. The world has a different idea of salvation, of saving man and the world through violence, power, influence, wealth, control. This was Satan's temptation to Jesus in the desert. You want to, to start your, your mission as Savior, as Messiah? Show your power. Turn these stones into bread. Throw yourself. Even Peter did not understand this. When Jesus revealed his plan to go to Jerusalem and fulfill his mission by dying on the cross, Peter blocked him. And right there on the cross, the same. The priests and the soldiers they were taunting Jesus. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Even the thief beside him said, Are you the Christ? Save yourself and us. And Jesus' response was, Father, forgive them, for they do not know. And Isaiah describes it in his prophecy. He gave his back to those who struck him, his face to those who plucked his beard. He was led like a lamb, silent to the slaughterhouse. And this is what he asks of us who follow him his disciples. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. This is the picture of Calvary, prefigured by Mount Carmel. This is the picture of the sacrifice on the cross, prefigured by the sacrifice, the all-consumed sacrifice of Elijah. And in this picture, the gospel today adds another scene. And beneath the cross stood Mary, his mother. That's the picture of the gospel about Mary underneath the cross. The pictures we see painted by, by great painters are different. Mary prostrating on the cross. Mary overcome by grief, fainting, collapsing. But the picture of the gospel is totally different. Beneath the cross, Mary stood. She stood. She did not speak. She did not try to stop the, the, the crucifixion. She did not protest the innocence of her son. She did not protest to the great injustice being done. She simply stood under the weight of the cross, holding on to every strength she had and refusing to give back what she experienced in kind. 
Like Jesus, she absorbed everything. And she didn't allow this hatred, this bitterness, this vengeance to return to the world. I'd like to quote verbatim what Rolheiser uh, wrote because I cannot match his eloquence. Sometimes darkness has its hour and there is nothing we can do to stop it. Sometimes the blind, wounded force of jealousy, bitterness, violence, and sin cannot for that moment be stopped. But like Mary under the cross, we are asked to stand under them, not in passivity and weakness, but in strength, knowing that we can't stop some of the hatred, anger, and bitterness that surround it. And in this way, we can help take away the sins of the world and continue to bring Jesus' saving death to the world. Last week we had, or no, just a few days ago, we had a meeting with the Presbyteral Council. Among, and among other things, one of our priests presented our situation, the case of the ABS-CBN that uh, unjust denial of the franchise application. And he said that this is a great act of injustice and a threat to freedom. And the church is silent. We must speak up and be prophets. And then there was a discussion and all that. And in the end, I, I said, uh, yes, we must speak up. And we did. And right the day after the, the franchise denial by Congress, uh, I, I gave a statement there in, uh, that was published in Visayan Daily Star that such, such uh, that denial of the franchise is another blow to Philippine democracy. And that this is but the latest of a series of attempts by the administration to, to quash dissent, to mute, legitimate dissent. And we see this in the series of harassment on persons and institutions that is scary because it is an attempt to rob us of freedom, of free speech and expression. And I, I appeal to our government officials to take on the task that was given to them by the people themselves who elected them to protect the people and the nation. Because as it is, it's scary. We are on the verge of returning again to an authoritarian rule that we have been through in those miserable years of martial law. And I also said that I pray for them, and I really do, that they may have enlightenment and a change of heart to see the common good, and to our people to remain vigilant. This is, a, this is the price of the struggle of many years to regain the freedom. And uh, the, the suggestion was, let's condemn these 11 congressmen 
oh, sorry, 40, only, only 11, I think. Uh, so 47 or, or 70, my goodness. Let's condemn them. Let's put up a tarpaulin and thumbs up for 11 and thumbs down for 47. And then there was discussion. And then in the end, uh, I said that uh, we will not uh, forfeit our, our bounded duty and mission to be prophets. But let us be prophets as Christ had prophesied. We don't condemn individuals. We don't condemn persons. We condemn the sin, not the sinner. As a matter of fact, God wishes the sinner to return. And so, if our prophecy is to be credible and to be as Christ's own prophecy, it must be issue-based, not person-based. Jesus condemned the system and everything else. And the Holy Father gives us the example. He prophesizes on everything, every global issue, and very, very delicate issues. And he condemns what needed to be, conde what needed to be condemned. But he never mentions names of presidents or what. Issue-based, not personality-oriented. Because this is going to rob us of our, of the purity of our mission and prophecy, and of our credibility. Mabalik ina sa aton. Put thumbs up there, thumbs down there, and you will see the day after, thumbs up also. For the priests and church people that are really doing their job, that thumbs down for the priests that live scandalous lives and so forth. We experience that. The timbuhay, timpatay. And uh, social media and retaliated. Because that's not even how God acts. Otherwise, the cycle of hate, vindictiveness, arrogance, anger never ends. Jesus absorbed it, but returned sin into grace. And that's true with all the other sufferings that we go through, the pandemic. It has brought us untold sufferings that overturned our life. It has caused so much suffering uh, in relationships, in loss of lives, loss of jobs, and all that. But like all suffering, let us take what it can offer us as Jesus showed. Let us, let us allow it to transform us, to purify us. Our impatience to be turned into patience. We are deprived of so many things now. Let us allow the pandemic to purify us of attachments that are really unnecessary and even harmful to return to a life that is simpler and more substantive. Our lives are filled with all the borlolois that weigh us down and trap us and uh, imprison us. And the same with all the other sufferings. In the picture of darkness and cruelty 
and sorrow, the picture of Calvary. The gospel that we read is a tender scene. On the cross, Jesus had given up everything, everything. Literally, he hung on the cross totally naked. But before he died, as he looked down, he saw that there was still something left. And he gave it as his last and most precious gift. His last and most precious possession. Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. Like John, let us accept Mary as the Lord's last testament. And like John, let us take Mary to our home. Stabat Mater Dolorosa, Yuxta Crucem Lacrimosa, Dum Pendebat Filius. The mother weeping stood beneath the cross as her son hung on it. In the face of every suffering, let us stand with Mary under the cross. And let us offer our own suffering and unite it with Jesus and Mary and allow, us to be, allow ourselves to be purified by it and be transformed so that we may contribute our own share in our own salvation and the salvation of the world. Please rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker Greater of heaven, heaven and, earth, and earth, and of all things visible, visible and, and invisible. invisible. I, I believe in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only the begotten, begotten Son, Son of the Father, born of the Father God. before all ages, God from God, light from, from light, light, true God, God, from, God from true God. God. Begotten of me, consubstantial with the Father. With the Father. Through, Through him all things, things were made. For us men and for our salvation, salvation, he came down from heaven. heaven. The Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, Mary and became, became man. man. For our, our sake he was, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered so death, death and was buried. Was buried. And rose, rose again, again on the third day, day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, into heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come again, again in glory to judge, to judge the living and the dead. And his and kingdom, kingdom will have, will no, have end. no end. I believe, I believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the Lord giver, the giver of, life, of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and the Son who together with the Father and the Son, and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess, I confess one, one baptism, baptism for the forgiveness, for the forgiveness of, sins. of sins. And I look and I forward, forward to, the to the resurrection of the dead and the, and the life, life of the, of the world, world to come. To come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father, bringing to Him our desperate plea for mercy as we go through an unprecedented time of adversity as we beg Our Lady of Mount Carmel to lovingly intercede for us. For every petition we shall say, Lord, 
grant us your mercy. Lord, grant us your mercy. For the church leaders and all consecrated men and women, that they may authentically mirror God's prodigal love and compassion to all peoples, living their lives in solidarity with the poor and the suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your mercy. For the leaders of all nations, especially of our own country, may sincere and selfless concern for the welfare of the people be the root and motivation of all their undertakings. And may all these be guided and sustained by divine light and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your mercy. For all frontliners who risk their lives to take care of the sick and render basic services to the people, may they be protected from the contagion of COVID and be given the physical and spiritual stamina to withstand the demands of their noble tasks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your mercy. May this global and communal journey in darkness and uncertainty continue to bring out the best in each of us and keep our hearts nonetheless grateful for the many good things that have come about as a result of this pandemic. Spiritual renewal, stronger family bonds through praying together, grateful mindfulness and sensitivity to the needs of others, humble acknowledgement of our dependence on God, and confident trust in His unfailing help. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your mercy. For the whole order of Carmel, friars, nuns, and secular members, that they may generously share in the steadfast and invincible faith of our Blessed Mother, with a flame of love burning ever brightly in their hearts as they embrace the whole humanity in their prayers and sacrifices. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your mercy. For all those hardest hit by this pandemic, the sick and vulnerable, the lonely and isolated, the displaced and unemployed, the grieving and the hungry, may God's healing love and providential care touch them through his missionaries of mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your mercy. For all the faithful departed, especially those who succumbed to COVID, may our Blessed Mother's embrace welcome them to the joy of the eternal kingdom. And may they pray with us for an end to this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your mercy. We pray in silence for all other personal intentions we carry in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your mercy. Almighty and loving God, your infinite mercy goes beyond our fondest hope and expectation. Look with pity on the sufferings of your people and listen to, our, to all yearnings. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
this race. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, we reverently offer you these gifts as we recall the, pat the patronage of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In your service, may, we, may our love become like hers and so unite us more closely with the work of redemption. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right <coughs> and just. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do all, always and everywhere to give you thanks as we honor the Blessed Virgin, Mother of Carmel. Your word filled her heart and inspired all her actions, making her constant in prayer with the apostles and through her share in our salvation, constituting her the spiritual mother of all mankind. She watches unceasingly with a mother's loving care over the brethren of her son and lights up along our pilgrim way to the mount of your glory, our heaven of comfort, our beacon of comfort and the embodiment of all our hopes as members of the church. Now with all the saints and angels, we praise you forever. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Patricia, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form the divine teaching, we dare to say. Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. 
Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign for uh, and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Holding who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen.
please rise. Let us pray. Lord God, you have been, we have been nourished by the body and blood of your Son. May the wonders of your love strengthen us and help us to follow more faithfully the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to whose service we are dedicated. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to our Blessed Mother, Most Holy Virgin Mary. Altogether, we fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God, in the present tragic situation, when the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety. Turn your merciful eyes towards us amidst this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died. Be close to those whose loved ones are infected yet cannot be close to them. Fill with hope those who are troubled by uncertainty and have lost their jobs in a failing economy. Mother of God and our Mother, pray for us to God, the Father of mercies, that this great suffering may end and that hope and peace may dawn anew. Plead with your divine Son so that the sick and their families be comforted. Protect the doctors, nurses, and health workers who are on the front line of this emergency and who risk their lives to save others. Be close to those who assist the sick night and day and to priests who continue their pastoral ministry to serve the sick and everyone. Blessed Virgin, illuminate the minds of those engaged in scientific research to find effective cure to overcome this virus. Support national leaders that with wisdom, solicitude, and generosity, they may address the basic needs of their suffering people and devise social and economic solution to help them survive. Mary Most Holy, stir our consciences to work for peace, that the enormous funds invested in developing arms may be spent on promoting research to prevent similar future tragedies. Beloved Mother, help us realize that we are all members of one great family, that in a spirit of fraternity and solidarity, we can alleviate situations of poverty and need. Make us strong in faith, persevering in service, and constant in prayer. Mary, consolation of the afflicted, embrace all your children in distress and pray that God will stretch out his all-powerful hand and free us from this terrible pandemic, that life can serenely resume its normal course. To you who shine on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope, do we entrust ourselves, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, all these we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
be seated. Carmel welcomes you and expresses her loving gratitude for your having come for the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. We wish you her blessing, protection, and accompaniment as we journey through this pandemic in a new normal situation. A special word of thanks to our dear Bishop, Most Reverend Patricia Buzon, who presided and graced our celebration this morning with his presence. Likewise, do we thank our concelebrating priests for joining us on this occasion of Our Lady's Feast. Our Eucharistic ministers had faithfully assisted during the Novena Masses, and we thank them as they continue to serve today. Likewise, do we thank the ADSUM, DYAF, New Bacolod Cable Channel 6, and the documentation team for having facilitated to broadcast and stream our Novena and Feast Day Masses. We also thank our altar servers, our readers, and the Sacred Heart Seminary Choir who accompanied our liturgy this morning with their festive singing. Let us all give them a round of applause. This afternoon, we shall have the rosary procession in the grounds of Carmel before the Mass. We shall start at 5.30 p.m., and you are invited to join us. Health protocols had limited the attendance for the Masses, and we ask your understanding for any inconvenience caused. After the Mass, may we offer you our breakfast packs for take-home, as again, because of health protocols, any reception for now is not allowed. There will be stations outside the chapel where the packs will be distributed. Thank you for the great support your presence and participation had given, for the assistance offered to make our celebration meaningful and possible. Our Blessed Mother will see us through this pandemic journey, strengthening our faith and hope and empowering our capacity to love and care. Carmel assures that by day and night, someone prays for you. A blessed feast day. May God bless us all. We shall have the blessing of the scapulars. After the final blessing, scapulars will be distributed. Kindly form a line as in the distribution of Holy Communion. Please rise. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant, and grant us, us your salvation. salvation. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of mankind, by your right hand sanctify these scapulars, which your servants will devout, devotedly wear for the love of you and of your mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel. By her intercession, may they be protected from the wickedness of the enemy and persevere in your grace until death. You will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessed scapular, this blessed scapular, and make the most holy virgin, and ask the most holy virgin by her merits, it may be worn with no stain of sin, and may protect you from all harm and bring you into everlasting life. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessings. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Happy Feast Day, everyone.